Chapter 9 Sharon Kaylee has the special ability to take anything she hears and twist it, twerk it, mangle it for her own purposes. Like this honesty thing. Today she straight out told Emily she'd outgrown her, told Blake he needed a tutor, and pointed out the stain on Aviva's skirt. What? I was just being honest. I heard that sorry excuse for a jab spill out of her mouth way too many times. Sometimes that girl makes me want to scream. Henry. See, Miss Graham writes the following on the board. Being honest is not an excuse to be mean. Students brace themselves for a lecture. Miss Graham perches on stool. What do you all think I mean by that statement? Points to her socks, which are decorated with frogs. Like, for example, what if I asked you all what you think about my socks? Students raising hands. Miss Graham, don't answer that quite yet, because if you were honest, some of you would say that this pattern is too babyish for a teacher in a fifth grade classroom. Some of you would say that you don't like it. But I bet that most of you would stop yourselves and think that making a comment like that might hurt my feelings. Henry whispers to Kaylee, So if I ask you whether I'm the funniest, most entertaining seat partner ever, just be honest and admit that I'm growing on you. Kaylee scooches away. You're definitely the most irritating seat, seat partner ever, and uh, that's honest. Henry modestly. Thank you. I try. Miss Graham. Remember, you get to decide what kind of person you want to be. Let me ask you this. Are there any options that would protect my feelings and be truthful at the same time? Emily. Your socks look creative. Sharon. And colorful. Henry. And frogtastic. Students laugh. Henry, they're frogalicious and frogger-full. They're practically a frogorama. Miss Graham, yes, that's a perfect way to both protect someone's feelings and be honest. Aviva, I really do like your socks. Several students laugh. Aviva, what? Looks around. I do. Blushes. Miss Graham. Thank you for sharing, Aviva. I like them too. Henry. Me too. Aviva smiles at her feet. Emily. Status. <clears throat> Dear Hope, I cannot believe Kaylee had the nerve to say she had outgrown me. Like I'm a pair of too tight pants? Well, guess what? I've outgrown her too. That being honest is not an excuse to be mean lecture was totally directed at Kaylee. I'm pretty sure everyone knew it. Everyone except maybe Kaylee. Clearly, she has decided what kind of person she wants to be, and that's a jerk. I decided that I forgive Miss Graham for not letting me change table groups. As awful as it is to be in Kaylee's class now, I can't imagine how it'd be if we were in the same table group. I hardly ever say this word, but I think I hate her. And I definitely hate that she took Aviva away from me. I can't hate Aviva, even when I try to. I just miss her. She practically let me move in with her for the first couple weeks after the, the, the divorce. That was while dad packed his things and mom filled the bathtub up with tears. I can never forget that Aviva was there for me then. I'm glad Aviva spoke up about the socks. She loves anything about nature. When we studied snails in second grade, I swear she got obsessed. She thought snails were the cutest things ever. Seriously. She drew pictures of them to tape up all over her room. I remember crawling around in her backyard with empty spreadable butter containers. We poked holes with pencils in the lids. We picked up snails with our hands. Personally, I never thought snails were cute, not even the babies. I just acted like I did. I guess that's a lie too, kind of. 
but I was just trying to be a good friend. If Miss Graham asked me, I'd say that's the kind of person I want to be, a good friend. I wish things weren't so broken with Aviva these days. Maybe she's like one of those animals that change colors based on their environment to camouflage themselves. Geckos and chameleons do that, and some frogs change their colors to avoid getting gobbled up by predators. Although I don't think Aviva wants to change. Maybe she thinks she has to morph herself to survive. Not that Kaylee would eat her up. Or would she? Love and luck, Emily. P.S. I've been eating lunch with Sharon almost every day. She's definitely growing on me. Sharon's like an anti-chameleon. She doesn't change for her environment, even when she really should. Sometimes that makes her seem weird, and sometimes that makes her seem cool. For sure, it makes her reliable. Cecilia is nice, too. When I'm with them both, I don't have to try to be fun or cheerful. I can just be me. Kaylee. Dear Miss Graham, you said we get to choose what kind of person we want to be. You're right. I choose to be the kind of person who stands up for what I believe. I know part of your being honest is not an excuse to be mean lecture was pointed at me, but sometimes people need to hear the truth. I say it like it is. My mother does too. She shares her opinion and it makes people mad. Well then, too bad for them. Speaking of which, I have to stand up for privacy for our journals. Today, I wrote Kai a note in his mailbox with my left hand to describe disguise my handwriting. Kai, you're a thief. I know you took someone else's journal. You're the reason for that whole honesty lecture. It was a pain. Anonymous. P.S. Miss Graham, I don't know why I keep writing these journal entries to you since I'm pretty much not letting this journal out of my sight except at recess. I don't think you could possibly be reading it, but somehow it feels like right to keep addressing it to you. Kai. Hey frog, I got this note in my box today calling me a thief. And I thought, here we go. I'm not one to walk away from anything. And even though this whole journal thing was an honest mistake at first, I know I've got to own it. I tried to catch up with Blake today so I could explain, but I took too long gathering my homework folder. And before I knew it, he was halfway down the street. I called to him a couple of times, but he had his earbuds in and I guess he was listening to music or something, so he didn't hear me. Then the dude walked so fast, I couldn't keep up, and I was practically running. All of a sudden, he disappeared around a corner and in an okay neighborhood. So maybe I'm wrong about all this. His journal made it look like he was really poor or something. Maybe in his, he and his mom are renting a room. I guess the best thing to do is be nice to the guy. Last year, our teacher read Wonder out loud to the class to get us talking about being kind to each other, no matter what our differences are. I thought I'd hate it because I'm a fantasy and sci-fi guy, but when she got to that part where the kids and Augie are in the woods, I had to put my face down on my desk so no one would see me crying and think I was a wuss. And then I borrowed Wonder from the library and read it at home a whole mess of times. I don't know why I liked it so much. I guess it just makes me want to be a better person. P.S. I know Blake's really into Kermit. I could take him to visit my parents' university. There's a whole biology wing. I bet he'd love it. Blake. Working late. Buy yourself dinner. Love, Mom. Chapter 10. Henry. Scene. Miss Graham loses her marbles. Miss Graham. We'll be changing seats and table groups for the next two days while I try a new teaching technique. Students half groan and half cheer. Henry. Finally! Now I can try my material on someone who'll actually crack a smile. Kaylee. Finally! Now I can actually focus without being interrupted every three seconds. Miss Graham. This will only be for two days, so don't get too excited or too upset. This morning, when I called you each up to my desk for an assessment, 
I asked if you could whistle. All of those students who were given an orange sticker with the word Whistler in black letters, please place the sticker on your shirt now. Students rumbling. Miss Graham. For the next two days, we'll call this group of high achievers the Whistlers. At this time, I'd like all the Whistlers to move their desks to the front of the room. And all the non-Whistlers, move your desks to the back of the room. Students confused, rumbling. Miss Graham, quiet please. I know this sounds, seems strange, but new research is showing that on average, Whistlers are capable of accessing a greater percentage of their brains. If I keep all the Whistlers at the front of the room, maybe the non-Whistlers can learn from them. We are trying to maximize learning here. Henry whispers, oh, what? That makes zero sense. Neither I nor my sister can whistle, and we're Taiwanese. If some percentage of people use higher brain power, it's us Asians. We rule the world. Kaylee, shh. Henry whispers, no, seriously. You watch TV, right? Have you ever heard of an Asian who wasn't brilliant? Kaylee, uh, you mean besides you? Henry, hey, that was funny. You're getting the hang of this. Kaylee, shut up. Plus, that's a stereotype anyway. You're being racist. Henry, I'm allowed to make jokes about my own minority group. Didn't you read the handbook? Aviva sometimes jokes about not eating bacon because she's Jewish. But I can't. It'd be offensive if I did. You can joke about rich people. That's how it works. I'm allowed to joke about the super intelligence of my people. Miss Graham, Kaylee and Henry, please hold your conversation. Kaylee, I'm assuming you're explaining this concept to Henry, since it does sometimes take non-whistlers longer to understand. Henry whispers, is that a joke? Miss Graham, non-whistlers will need more time on assignments, so I'll be releasing the whistlers first to recess and lunch and after school. Henry, uh, what about the people who can raise one eyebrow at a time? Raising right eyebrow. I bet we use a higher percentage of brain power too. Or how about people who can sneeze with their eyes open? Comedic pause. Because my neighbor can, for real. Miss Graham yelling, non-whistlers, focus. Sharon raises hand. Miss Graham, Sharon, you'll have to wait. You're a non-whistler. I'm going to be taking questions from whistlers first. If you listen carefully, non-whistlers, your questions will be answered. Henry groans silently. Emily, status. <laughs> Dear Hope, I can't believe I was beginning to like Miss Graham. I thought she actually cared about us. But apparently I was wrong. I'm a non-whistler and she's being so mean to us. I hid in the bathroom at recess to practice my whistling, but I can still only blow air. I hate it when people I think are cool and then they change up on me. It feels like a trick, like what Kaylee and Aviva have done to me. It doesn't help that they're both whistlers. Or like the birthday when I turned six, and mom decided to go healthy and make me a watermelon cake. She seriously stuck candles in a slab of watermelon and thought I'd be happy. Or the divorce, for obvious reasons. But life does that to me all the time. Sticks, sticks his tongue out at me and wags it. You thought things were going to be okay? Nope, just kidding. Life's gonna suck again. Discouraged, Emily. I can't even put on my fake happy face right now. Cecilia. Hola, Abloita. I'm so glad I have friends outside Miss Graham's class. The other teachers aren't doing the whistler thing, thank goodness, so I can forget about this annoying classroom drama at lunch. I don't understand Miss Graham. Shouldn't she be pairing us up so the whistlers can help the non-whistlers learn? Some things are a mystery to me. Abloita, guess what? I'm going to join a soccer team outside of school. Some of the girls who play at lunch are on a YMCA team. 
There are practices on Mondays and Wednesdays at 4.30 at Melbourne Park. Mommy doesn't get off till 5, but it's close enough to our apartment to walk. Can't wait to start. Today I dove for a save in the high corner and blocked it. Someday you've got to see me play goalie. Maybe Mommy can take a video on her phone and send it to you. Te extrano mucho. Words to practice. YMCA. Do you remember going there on the weekends for their tiny tot soccer, Abnuita? Besos y abrazos, Cecilia. Kaylee. Dear Miss Graham, today you made me laugh. No offense, but you're a little baddie for giving Whistler's first choice on everything. Although I agree that we needed more order in the classroom and the whole take it to the class thing is a big time waster. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to have freedom and responsibilities and all that, but not everyone's as mature as I am. So I'm glad you came up with a system. It's simple. Whistlers rule, non-whistlers drool. You should observe our next recess though, so you can see how some of these non-whistlers are behaving. Like poor sports, just because they can't whistle. Sheesh. Blake. Whistlers first. Whistlers only. Whistlers versus non-whistlers. Non-whistlers down. Sharon. Sometimes I wonder why I always have to be the one to speak up. Does no one else have a voice? Does no one else see the unfairness? Does no one else notice the way the whistler's stupidity pits kid against kid so easily? Although I guess when you look at history, which is, by the way, the point, obviously, grown-ups have done much, much worse. If that's the point, though, to show us what we can do to each other so easily, so quickly, that maybe it's best if I don't say a single thing at all. Aviva, date October 18th. Am I the only one that thinks this Whistler thing is a metaphor? I mean, Miss Graham has us reading The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank, and we're learning about segregation in history. The scary thing is how much everyone has gotten into it. Some of the boys started a water fountain fight at recess. I don't think Miss Graham realizes how fast things can get out of control. I brought Kermit to sit with me at my desk today. I watched him breathe, and that calmed me down and helped me think. Should I say something? I always get stressed about speaking up, like maybe I'm wrong or something. I usually just wait around and eventually someone says what I wanted to say. I guess I let someone else be my voice. Miss Graham set up the class council. Now it's time to use it. We need to vote this Whistler thing away. This is uberly stressful. Maybe I should speak up now. Kai. Hey frog, Kaylee's getting on my nerves. She thinks she's such hot stuff because she's a whistler. Our teams are sort of rivals anyway, what with them stealing our first egg drop idea and all that tension between Emily and her. Girls are so mean to each other sometimes. And Kaylee's walking around like she's Draco Malfoy or some per Percy Jackson demigod. Emily's been sniffling all morning and her eyes are lobster red. I'm done. Someone's got to say something. It might just have to be me. Kaylee. Dear Miss Graham, I can't believe Kai. Who does he think he is? Cornering me like that? Talking so loud that half the school can hear? Well, I stay totally calm. I told him in a very soft voice so only he could hear that I knew he'd stolen Blake's journal. So who was he to talk? That I could tell on him if I wanted to? That made him stop talking real fast. Sharon. Aviva surprised me today. She dropped a note into Miss Graham's mailbox as she walked by. When we filed back in from recess, 
sweaty and breathing hard, Miss Graham had taped the note squarely on the front of her desk. I would like to propose a new law, it read, that every student is treated equally. Aviva sat in her seat, her cheeks the color of pomegranates. I wanted to hug her. Why couldn't she own her idea? It was a good one. Still, I'm proud of her for speaking up. I'm proud of me for holding back just a little bit so she could be heard.